let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. The chosen ones, everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 to 18. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the, said the Lord Almighty. Second lesson, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 11 to 12. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and, and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are, are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Golden text, 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 to 17 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You must be spotless. Introductory spiritual chorus. They have been sealed. They have been sealed, they that are spotless. Quote, brethren, the above text and the chorus form the summary of this gospel. Those that are spotless and without blemish have been sealed. Brotherhood of the cross and star is the terminus, the destination point. Therefore, whoever claims to love God or work for him and keep all his commandments but continues to love the world and the things of the world has achieved nothing. In fact, such a person has not started at all. No man can love both God and the world. This explains why it is stated that whosoever loves the world has not the love of God in him. On the other hand, anyone that loves God cannot be a friend of the world. This is his own work for all of you. I want you all to stamp this gospel on your foreheads to serve as a constant reminder of God's injunction that you should not love the world and the things therein. The world is full of material and carnal lust. These things are not of God but of the world. But whoever loves God has successfully arrived at the destination point. This gospel will help you to know when you are close to God and when you have departed from Him. It will also open your eyes, your ears and all the senses and lead you to greater spiritual awareness the first lesson has warned you to touch nothing defiled so that God can move closer to you and you will be children 
and he will be your father. By explanation, it means that any moment you are defiled, you are separated from God. This calls for your complete disengagement from the world so that God can rejoice with you. Your continuous indulgence in the things of the world will separate you from God. The only people who shall have a share in this kingdom and obtain the right of sonship are those who have completely separated themselves from the world. They are those who do not struggle for positions, for names, or anything that is of less importance to this kingdom. This gospel is the way, the truth, and the life. Whatever name you are called, whether Christ, witness, Christ, servant, child of God, or bishop, is immaterial in this kingdom. Do not expect any person to examine your activities in this kingdom. This gospel is the only yardstick with which you can carefully examine your activities in this kingdom. Do what you may, except you practice this gospel, all is in vain. It is for this reason that so many are called, but few are chosen. In other words, you have to completely flee from sin. What is in a title? There are some who give themselves various titles such as Christ, King, Soul Spiritual, Head, and so on. Even here in this kingdom, I want to let you know that it is not the name that you are called that is important, but the state of your heart. Anyone who is short of this quality has no place in this kingdom of God. Moreover, no matter how wealthy you are, whether you are a millionaire or a billionaire, it does not matter. Whether you are a professor, a managing director, a scientist, president or anything, it is not important in this kingdom. What is important to God is that you must separate yourself from the world so that the Father will receive and rejoice with you. This gospel is given to you irrespective of your material contributions to Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Except you abide by this gospel and stay away from everything unclean, you are unknown to God. The Kingdom of God I have told you time and time again that Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is not a church. It is not a healing home or prayer house. Our pride is in none of the things of this world but in God Almighty who has come down by himself which is Christ. Do not allow anybody to apprehend and intimidate you over your deeds. Your work is clear and result handy. And that justifies you. Brotherhood is a separate race. The world recognizes the rich, the powerful, the majority, the highly educated, and even rogues. But that is not the case in this kingdom. Only the just and undefiled are highly esteemed. Complete abstinence. From sin is the basic requirement and qualification in the kingdom of God. Even if you are left with one sin, you are still grouped amongst lawbreakers and, the sub and are subject to perdition. He who gave the commandments that you should not steal or kill or fornicate or hate, he is the same person who has now enjoined all of us to refrain from smoking, drinking, division, swindling, and all other sinful acts. Therefore, even if a man should keep all the other commandments but continues in one sin, 
such a man shall perish. On the other hand, a person who is able to keep only one commandment will equally perish. Our Lord Jesus Christ emerged victorious because he forsook the world. After his baptism, he was taken by the Spirit into the wilderness where he underwent a sorrow test over the things of this world. He overcame all because he disassociated himself from the world and its loss. This is why he was crowned the beloved of God. When the tempter asked Christ to turn some stones into bread and eat, he turned and told him that it was written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The devil knew that Christ was really hungry, and that was the appropriate time for him to launch his temptation. The tempter later took the Lord to a certain pinnacle from where he was showed all the world things all the whole earth and the fullness therein and asked him to bow and worship him and all would be his the lord rebuked him it was written that he alone must worship the lord his god having overcome the two tests the tempter took the lord to another high pinnacle and challenge him to jump from there for it was written that God will give the angels charge to protect him. Here the Lord warned him to tempt not his God. If it were you, would you have withstood or overcome these temptations? There are many of you who would stop at nothing including even leaving brother out of the cross and staff just because of food or money or any other material thing. Many sisters in the kingdom have left to other churches because of their husband. Many brethren have because of women left brother out of the cross and staff. This explains why the Bible has asked how possible it is for you who seek for glory from one another to release to please God our Lord Jesus Christ spoke he said hereafter I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and art nothing in me that was in John chapter 14 verse 30 your prayers are without end and so innumerable before God if I may ask Will the Lord of this earth find nothing in your heart when he come? Men are very carnally minded and that is why Satan is able to easily overpower you. The picture of God. My, in my intention this day is not to paint vividly the picture of God and reveal to you who he is. Whatever you love more than God, be it your parents, your children, your wife, or husband, or even yourself, it means you have no share in this kingdom. This is why he says clearly that he is a jealous God. Everything that a man possesses comes from God. These teenets are necessary. To place you where you belong. Whatever is placed before you, whether it be money or food or women, men and so on, you will not lose your head and depart from God if you love and believe in Him. You will always stand by God in whatever situation you find yourself. A man who loves God would not mind trekking from London to Calabar, if need be, or to any place for that matter. Being present 
with the Father in Calabar will not cause your name to be included in the kingdom of God. Whatever the distant where one may be, if he loves God, his name will be included in the book of life. Re-examine the first lesson. First lesson, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 to 18. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Reject the world. From this point, from this text, has money, car, worldly knowledge, power, or anything mundane been included? You have to separate yourself from the world and the fullness therein, and the Lord will receive you. Your song at all times should be take the whole world and give me jesus take the whole world and give me jesus many of you neither take the whole world but reject our lord jesus christ Many of you rather take the whole world, but reject our Lord Jesus Christ. Even if the whole world should reject you, you should not be perturbed once you have Christ. Many people come to God to obtain bread and to obtain wealth, husband or wife or children and other mundane things. If these expectations are not fulfilled, would they not deny him? Those are the ones who promptly call him names and ask God various questions when they are tested. Such people are faithless and promptly fail the highest test. You are unable to convert even a soul unto God because you do not love him. Any man who loves God does not even need to preach or talk to anybody because he is God's living witness. The person who loves and believes fervently in God does not lack anything. God himself knows those who love him. The vagabond Jew who went out to preach in Jesus' name was proved as an unbeliever by the demonic spirit. When the former attempted to rebuke the latter in the name of Jesus, the demonic spirit queried saying, Paul I know, Jesus I know. But who are you? That goes to prove the fact that even the demons know God and the truth. This is why many so-called preachers and pastors are incapable of gathering followers unto God. Preaching that is not backed by practice is meaningless and unprofitable. This is the problem the entire world is facing. Many pastors, many elders, deaconesses would withdraw from the church if stripped or relieved of their designation. Re-examine the second lesson. Second lesson, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 11 to 12. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. God is all-knowing. 
God sees and hears you wherever you may be if you love him. Do what you may and even burn yourself in fire. It profits you nothing if you do not love him. Our Lord Jesus Christ is a shining example for all of us to emulate. Recall what happened when he restored the sight of a certain young man who was born blind. The Jews condemned this act claiming it was carried out on the Sabbath day and done through the power of Beelzebub. They denounced our Lord Jesus Christ and proclaimed Moses as their recognized God sent prophet whose, whose voice God always promptly answered. The blind man whose sight was restored replied that never had it been said that God answered the prayers of an evil person. It means God knows those that are his who really love him. Once you love God, stay where you are and you will feel his impact. Those who love God do not need to be prayed for and do not need to make any requests to him. He is all-knowing and all-powerful and cares for his children. This is why he says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. He knows all that we have and need, and need not be told. This explains why loving and obeying God are the greatest. There is nothing he is incapable of doing. He could pass through your wife, your child, or any person to examine your faith in him. He could even use money to examine your faith. God could also give so much money and if by virtue of the fact that you have now become wealthy, you suddenly lost your head and love for him, he will then laugh at you. Man can only deceive themselves and their fellow man, but not God. I am painstakingly explaining this to you to enable you to be aware of who God is and what he expects from you. Therefore, however well you can sing or preach or pray and dance, you should remain calm in the kingdom because it is God who does everything. No man lives or is capable of doing anything without God. Our Lord Jesus Christ had many disciples but only twelve followed him wherever he went. Even then when he told the twelve that all of them would deny him, Peter in particular stamped his feet on the ground and beat his chest and promised to stand by and identify with him and accordingly they all withered away before long. He is so powerful and can destroy the entire world within one second. Despite the lies told against him and the allegations heaped up on him, he did not fight back. Pilate was so amazed at his indifference and reservedness and queried whether the Lord did not know that he, Pilate, had power to release or condemn him. The Lord does not see anything important in the world or in any man. Total self-surrender is what God wants. The same God is now working on earth and his stationed at one place. If it were you, you would have hired 
the services of lawyers and done everything to free yourself. God knows those that love him and his eyes and ear are focused on those that obey him. This is so because God has only one eye and one ear. The reward for proclaiming God. Christ is the only begotten of God because he alone obeyed him and surrendered himself unto him. Despite the beautiful and wonderful works that he did, the Jews promulgated laws banning people from proclaiming him and propagating his good deeds. Anyone who attempted to glorify him was promptly punished. This was why the parents of the blind young man refused to tell the Jews who restored the sight of their son. They admitted that he was born blind and was healed but could not say who did it. They rather referred the people to the young man for an answer to their question. Their act was deliberate and cowardly because they were afraid of victimization by the Jews if they should say that Christ healed their son. This is similar to the case of a certain member of the Church of God mission whose hernia was healed here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Out of joy from that relief, he went testifying even into his church that he was healed in Brotherhood. For that reason, he was suspended and later excommunicated for saying the truth. He then, on the advice of his wife, returned to Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. On arrival in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, he was given 15,000 Naira as charity. Today, this brother is living testimony in his village. This is why I tell you that there is no burden in accepting, but let your faith be accompanied by his work, by its work. Focus all your attention on him and love him alone. They are deceivers who claim to have known God before their entry into brother of the cross and star. God could be likened to a bullet which comparatively is more powerful than the gunpowder. It is the bullet that kills and not the gunpowder. Let us not run from the powder leaving the bullet. Let no one come to brother of the cross and star for any material motive but for self-surrendering and selfless service to God. It is the humility of our Lord Jesus Christ that earned him exaltation. He was not exalted because he healed the sick and raised the dead but because he humbled himself even unto death. That you are a Christ student, a Christ servant, a Christ witness, a child of God, a bishop, and so on, is immaterial in this kingdom. But what is important is to love God. We examine the golden text. Golden text, 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What brotherhood of the cross and star signifies? Many people come to brotherhood of the cross and star with diverse complaints and prayers. 
those motives reveal the nature of people that they are. No true man of God complains, laments, or cries for any reason. The reason is that such a person has nothing on earth other than God since the world and the fullness therein shall pass away. He who laughs last, laughs the best. He that has chosen God is he who has chosen wisely. Such a person has no other place to go or relative to lean on but only on God and he will never be disappointed. Our Lord Jesus Christ is upright and just. He is in our midst and abides with us all. Therefore, his power, his wisdom, and his glory abide with his children forever. Only the faithless roam about from one church to another, remaining, remaining in their faithlessness. Some members of Brother of the Cross and Star who left the fold roam from one place to another and finally finding nothing out in the world, decide to come back to continue where they stopped. Christ had said that except a man eats of his flesh and drinks of his blood, he will not have eternal life. Where therefore will a man who continues to indulge in sin have eternal life? The one who has forsaken sin is he who has eternal life. It is the man who keeps his commandments, eats his flesh and drinks of his blood. The same shall have eternal life. The number of children, wives or husbands or money you have will not afford you eternal life. Here in the kingdom of God, we abhor falsehood, drinking, eating of flesh, litigation, idolatry, snuffing, adultery, and the rest of the vices. That is what Brother of the Cross and Star signifies. It is rooted in righteousness and joy. Anybody who practices righteousness is already in the kingdom. Brethren, I will not take you any further. A stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let who have ears to hear let them hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the world. May God bless his holy word. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.